All right, let's dive into the vibrant history of Mountain Dew. Picture this, you're about to take on a half-pipe, X Games medal in sight, adrenaline pumping, and what's fueling your daring spirit? A two-liter bottle of Mountain Dew. But did you know that this extreme sports elixir started its journey as a humble mixer for southern whiskey drinkers? Today, we're going to take a trip down memory lane and explore the transformation of this country cool drink from a hillbilly delicacy to the go-to beverage for thrill-seekers. So, buckle up, folks, as we journey through the bright green history of Mountain Dew. But before we get started, if you find this video interesting, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. By subscribing, you'll be the first to know when we drop a new video, and you'll be joining a community of history buffs just like you. So, if you're ready to take a deep dive into the past, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Now, let's rewind to the 1930s. Soft drinks were all the rage in Appalachia. But for Knoxville brothers Barney and Ally Hartman, none of the existing sodas were cutting it. They'd moved to Tennessee with a love for natural setup, a soda brand that, back home in Georgia, they'd love to mix with bourbon. But they couldn't find any natural setup anywhere in their new city, and they were presumably drinking the kind of bourbon that could power a Model T, so sipping on it was out of the question. So they set out to make their very own natural setup inspired lemon lime whiskey mixer, and by the end of the decade they'd created just the thing. They called it Mountain Dew, an old slang term for moonshine as referenced in the 1882 Irish folk song The Rare Old Mountain Dew. The Hartmans loved their new clear caffeine-free creation so much that they wanted to share it, and they soon tried to market it around as a mixer. Unfortunately, no one seemed to want what the brothers were selling, and it wasn't until the 1946 Gatlinburg Bottling Convention, where Barney and Ally unveiled their fully rebranded product, that Mountain Dew finally went into production. With this rebrand came Willie the Hillbilly, a barefoot rifle toting usually bearded cartoon mascot along with their infamous Mountain Dew, Tickle Your Innards. They should switch back to that if you ask us. What's more, they stopped marketing Mountain Dew as a mixer, and they instead pumped it full of caffeine and advertised it as a standalone soda, packaged in green bottles, just like the natural setup that inspired it. But with stiff competition coming from the already well-established, 7-Up Mountain Dew was slow to take off. And in the 1950s, the Hartmans decided to part ways with their struggling brainchild. In came Marion, Virginia's Tip Corporation, a company that primarily made soda concentrates to ship off to bottlers. Under this new ownership, the Mountain Dew recipe was reworked to include either Tri-City Lemonade or Tang, depending on who you ask. And it re-emerged on the market in 1961. The Tip Corporation's reign did not last long though, and in 1964, the Pepsi-Cola company bought the entire corporation outright, making Mountain Dew a sub-brand of Pepsi forevermore. When PepsiCo acquired Mountain Dew, the Beverly Hillbillies TV show was still at the peak of its popularity. Hillbillies were white hot in the 60s. PepsiCo saw an opportunity to capitalize on that popularity, and they decided to keep on going with Willie the Hillbilly and the country-themed marketing. Likewise, the first cans and bottles of Pepsi's Mountain Dew featured Willie the Hillbilly shooting at another man, along with an all-new slogan that came to represent the brand. Get that barefoot feeling drinking the Mountain Dew. This slogan only lasted about a year before PepsiCo threw two more catchphrases into the mix, put a little Yahoo in your life, and both carried the brand into the 1970s. In 1974, though, PepsiCo changed the Mountain Dew recipe once again, adding in orange flavoring and at last giving it its infamous neon green hue, the color of a Ninja Turtles drug test. They then moved Mountain Dew away from its hillbilly vibe and began to feature a wider array of outdoorsy lifestyles. At first, this new marketing strategy primarily focused on water sports. 
In one ad, a bunch of youths swim and jump off waterfalls. In another, a different group rides horseback through a creek bed. So they still hadn't moved that far from their country roots. Mountain Dew continued with this strategy into the 1980s, but they slowly started adding in all sorts of other more extreme sports as the decade wore on. These later ads featured less and less water, and they began to showcase everything from breakdancing to skateboarding. Then in 1988, PepsiCo tried its hand at an all-new Mountain Dew flavor. They called it Mountain Dew Red. Mountain Dew Red wasn't long for this world though, and after being market tested around Alabama, PepsiCo pulled the plug on it before the year was up. Talk about a code red. All the while, the brand continued to phase out its Knoxville Moonshiner origins and phase in extreme sports. This move coincided with the release of Mountain Dew Sport, another short-lived variant that, this time, marketed itself as a performance booster. This is a totally different Mountain Dew energy drink than the one you threw up at Chester's house party last year. As the Hartman brothers themselves could tell you, Sometimes a good idea takes a few tries. Though Mountain Dew Sport was discontinued in 1991, it was only one year later, in 1992, that Mountain Dew finally changed its slogan to the action-oriented Do the Dew We Still Think They Should Work Tickle Your Innards Back In There. In 1995, Mountain Dew then became one of seven sponsors to support the first ever X Games. From that point forward, the brand would forever be associated with high-octane daredevils on skateboards, BMX bikes, and base jumping. This extreme image began to attract a very different demographic than two country brothers looking for something to mix with their bourbon would have ever expected. In 2001, PepsiCo decided to give their Red Mountain Dew idea another shot. They almost named this new version Wild Cherry Mountain Dew but they ultimately landed on Code Red instead, possibly because that name takes less time to shout at a 7 to 11 clerk. Code Red launched via an online racing game titled Mission Code Red, the winners of which received free six packs of the new soda before anyone else got the chance to try it. Soon after, Code Red became available to the wider public, and its quick success caused PepsiCo to launch an endless stream of other Mountain Dew flavors, in extreme radioactive colors. In 2003, they came out with Mountain Dew Livewire, an orange version of the drink that was initially a summertime exclusive. But by 2005, Livewire had grown so successful that it became available year-round. Then just two years later, PepsiCo held the first ever Democracy promotion, where they placed three all-new Mountain Dew flavors head-to-head. -head. Revolution, Supernova and Voltage were released to the public for a limited time. And Dew lovers everywhere had a chance to vote on their favorite new Dew. And on August 19, 2008, the people spoke loud and clear. Voltage was to become the new permanent Mountain Dew flavor, while the other two were to go the way of the Mountain Dew sport. It was also in 2008 that Doritos, another PepsiCo brand, launched Quest. Quest was a mystery Doritos flavor that was ultimately revealed to be, you guessed it, Mountain Dew. It's only a matter of time before they make Dorito-flavored Mountain Dew to deliver a more efficient stomachache. In the years that followed, Mountain Dew tried repeating the democracy voting promotion, but no other winning flavors ever matched the success and staying power of Mountain Dew voltage. The successful flavors aside, the brand also took big swings at a variety of other flavors that never took off. The most notable canary in this extreme coal mine was Mountain Dew Pitch Black. Pitch Black was a dark grape version of Mountain Dew that saw its first limited release in 2004, got another limited release in 2011, and then reappeared for Dew Cision 2016, where it finally won its place as the newest permanent flavor. It was a real rags-to-riches soda, but sales lagged in the years that followed, 
and apparently permanent doesn't mean a whole lot when you're a Mountain Dew flavor. Aside from a few regional exceptions, Pitch Black was all but pulled from store shelves in 2019. Since then, it's seen only one more limited release in 2023. But the Dew has fallen on more successes than not. Around the same time as Pitch Black was unveiled, PepsiCo released a whole new lineup of Mountain Dew products, Mountain Dew Kickstart. Kickstart was advertised as a breakfast time alternative to Mountain Dew's main lineup, presumably to try and convince middle school Halo players not to chug one or two cans of attention deficit disorder right before homeroom. Kickstart contains less caffeine and sugar than normal do, has a variety of added vitamins, and makes use of real fruit juice. However, please don't call it juice. Even Mountain Dew would be offended. Kickstart launched in 2013 with orange citrus and fruit punch flavors, but eventually added black cherry, pineapple orange mango, and midnight grape to the lineup. While caffeine was once a natural byproduct of the soda making process, which extracted both flavor and caffeine from the cola nut, caffeine today is almost exclusively an added ingredient that cola companies sprinkle in like a salt bay meme. Way back in the 80s, the FDA tried to put an end to this practice, but major soda brands argued that the added caffeine was integral to their soft drink success. Then the FDA let it slide. Mountain Dew proliferated in the high caffeine days of the 1980s, arguably more so than any of its competitors. Today, a can of Mountain Dew has a whopping 54 mg of caffeine, 20 whole milligrams more than a can of Coke, making it one of the most caffeinated soft drinks on the market. While this high caffeine content may have caused a stir among parents, it was Mountain Dew's 1997 competitor, Surge, that received the most caffeine-related backlash. Even though Surge only had 51 mg of caffeine, which is 3 mg fewer than Mountain Dew. Still, Mountain Dew couldn't escape the 90s entirely unscathed. It was around this time that a sinister urban legend formed. The coloring used in Mountain Dew Yellow Number no. 5 was said to not only lower sperm count but, in more extreme cases, cause the male organ to shrivel up altogether. That's not the sort of innards tickling anyone had in mind. While this rumor caused some to back away from the soft drink entirely, others supposedly began to rely on Mountain Dew as a contraceptive, which, needless to say, is a terrible idea. There's no way of knowing how widespread this trend may or may not have been, but it was perceived to be enough of an issue that multiple major publications, including the Wall Street Journal and Dear Abby, ran articles that warned against doing the do as safe sex. While there's never been any strong evidence that yellow number no. 5 lowers sperm count, the myth persists to this day. Caffeine and yellow number no. 5 aside, Mountain Dew has had its share of genuine controversies. For instance, in 2008, Mountain Dew customer Ronald Ball claimed to have found a dead mouse in a can of Mountain Dew, a discovery he claims to have made only after drinking some of the contaminated product and becoming violently ill as a result. He thereby sued PepsiCo for $75,000 in damages. PepsiCo in turn submitted to the court an affidavit stating that Ball's mouse claim was impossible. According to the affiant, veterinarian Lawrence McGill, if a mouse were to be submerged in an acidic liquid like Mountain Dew, it would completely disintegrate within 30 days of exposure. Considering soda can strip the paint off your car if you let it sit long enough, this isn't hard to imagine. Since Ball had opened his can 74 days after it first was packaged, PepsiCo claimed that there was no way a whole mouse could be contained within his can unless it was a particularly clever mouse. Eventually, Pepsi settled with Ball out of court, though they maintained their innocence throughout the process. 
Then, in 2013, Mountain Dew came under fire from Ph.D. holding activist Boyce Watkins for a commercial wherein a handful of black men stand alongside a goat in a police lineup. Boyce created an online stir, calling it the most racist commercial in history. While he later backtracked that statement when he discovered that the ad was conceived and voiced by Tyler, the creator, a black artist, the damage was already done. PepsiCo issued an apology and pulled the entire campaign. No amount of rumors or controversies could slow that cool mountain roll. In the years since, Mountain Dew tried their hand at a variety of energy drink products, including both the now-defunct Game Fuel and their ongoing lineup of Mountain Dew energy drinks. What's more, Mountain Dew today has over a dozen flavors that are each individually exclusive to specific stores and restaurants across the U.S. For instance, Walmart has Mountain Dew Frostbite, Kroger has Thrashed Apple, and Dollar General has Sweet Lightning. In contrast, Bojangles has Southern Shock, Applebee's has Dark Berry Bash, and Red Lobster has the ever-luxurious Dugarita. Last but certainly not least, there's Baja Blast, a Taco Bell exclusive considered by many do heads to be the crown jewel of extreme flavor. You can get Baja Blast any day of the week at your local Bell, but it's also available in grocery and convenience stores during the summer. And in a recent announcement that caused many to start involuntarily grinding their teeth, Baja Blast will be available on store shelves throughout 2024. Mountain Dew moves billions of dollars of product every year, making it PepsiCo's second most popular beverage behind, you know, Pepsi. Still, it's mostly popular among young Midwestern men, with just 20% of Mountain Dew drinkers being responsible for 70% of all sales. It's thereby only natural that, most recently, PepsiCo's taken Mountain Dew into the adult beverage market, bringing the brand full circle to its roots as a mixer. In February of 2022, Hard Mountain Dew, including both Black Cherry and Watermelon variants, was tested in Iowa, Florida, and Tennessee. And this all-new product success allowed PepsiCo to expand Hard Mountain Dew's availability nationwide. Soon after, they also launched Hard Basha Blast and Hard Livewire variants, making dropping in on that half-pipe more exciting and dangerous than ever before Barney and Ali Hartman would be tickled. So what do you think? What's your favorite Mountain Dew flavor? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other Wayback History videos.